Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another capsule series selection. Today, I thought it would be a fun video to do. I've been asked so many questions about two powerhouse fragrance houses, and I think that if I bring my particular connective tissue and contrast of how I feel about these particular fragrances and what these two powerhouse fragrance houses bring in these particular essences, I think it's gonna be a fun idea to do by having a competition. Just the friendly verses to bring about what, like I said, the connectivity and the contrast would be between two popular fragrance houses, one being Roja Parfums and one being Nishane. Today, it is Thanksgiving's day, and I wanna tell you guys about what I'm wearing. I am wearing my favorite scent. This is Cartier's Oud and Amber, while also drinking Oberon Cabernet. You know I love the scent cigars and wines. And my cigar today is going to be a 10 year aged Lost City by the House of Fuente. Now this cigar has been in my humidor. I had a great conversation with one of my guys, Files Corp, I believe that's how you pronounce it, is his IG handle. Files Corp is one of those guys, man, he's a real genuine dude, really, really takes care of business, really, really reaches out, really, really is a, a stand up guy. And I love his cigar content on IG, and he really connects with the, the community well. I love the way that guy handles business. Um, and he smoked one of these Lost City cigars the other week, and we had a bit, bit of a conversation, and I recalled that I had that cigar in my humidor. So this day, Thanksgiving Day 2023, I'll be smoking on that Lost City. And as I said, my favorite scent, at least for fall time and at this moment, Cartier's Oud and Amber, and my favorite, Cabernet, Oudin, Oum, Oberon. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about this particular competition. It's going to be a two-on-two -two competition to see where we can go with it. If this sounds like the type of content you think you'll enjoy, pull up a seat, pour a glass, and of course, let's enhance. Let's get a taste of this Oberon. Man, just a, a copious amount of great wood notes, oak barrel, mold fruits a bit earthy a bit of a floral undertone pepperish very nice mild tannins very long finish Oberon is one of the better Cabernets as a table wine drinking wine especially for a dinner party Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Dry Down, the lifestyle channel where we as enthusiasts aspire to enhance and elevate our olfactory sensory experiences through the understanding of the different aromas, faucets, and nuance of scent cigars and wine. I'm your host, Chris. Welcome to today's experience. We're going to get right into this friendly competition today between the House of Roja Parfums and the House of Nisha Ney. Two very prominent houses in the fragrance game right now, especially in the niche realm where many of the people that have transferred from designers and upscale designer unique houses to niche have gone into this particular house wheel of Roja and Nisha Ney, and they are great, great fragrance houses to dive into. Very, very unique smelling fragrances, very high quality fragrances, and I think everyone that's on this channel and platform watching knows about these particular houses. So, as it stands, we're going to get into this uh, this list, this revel in the magnificence and enchantment of these particular fragrances. Now, I did kind of do a, a, a pre-thinking um, on this, so I'm just going to give you what I got from these and trying to give you some nuance of what I like about them. Make sure I got my notes here. So, the way I do the compositions or the, the competition is what I wanted to bring about a 100-point list. And the 100-point list is a composition list, a performance list, and an impression list. And so we're going to give a competition uh, for each fragrance. This is going to be something fun for me to do for you guys. So this is the head, heart, and base get five points apiece. The sillage, projection, and longevity gets five points apiece. The sophistication, the time and season, the occasion, and the masculinity gets five points apiece, totaling the ability to get 50 points per fragrance, equaling 100 in total possibility. And we're going to see what we stand on. So first off, what we're going to go with is my the soft and subtle um, verbena style Rosa Parfums Vetiver Extra. Now this particular scent 
is the original X-Straight presentation production. This particular scent is one of those fascinating, very uplifting, live and beautiful vetiver fragrances. And so for this particular scent, I give you the rundown of what I gave on it from its the head of this particular fragrance got a five points because the opening of this um, bergamot and lemon mixture, classic for Rosa Dove, got a five points. The, the heart, which is a cystus labnum and a jasmine and rose de mai, got a nice, it's a nice mid transition. So I gave that 4.2 points. And the base of this particular scent is the shining star of this particular scent. And I gave this base five points. The base on this is built around the vetiver note. It also has a lot of labdanum and spicy nutmeg and oak moss, which makes this a very beautiful four season, classically leaning vetiver fragrance. So that was that particular scent. And the sillage on that one is, the wake and sillage on that one is pretty minute. I gave that a 3.7. The projection on it, it does project for the first hour and a half, two hours. So I gave that a 4.1. It does still, walk around and project off of you. So it has a longevity to it of about six or seven hours as a fresh scent, but at base makes it still project. And the longevity, like I said, is pretty long. So I gave it a 4.1 overall. The impression I get from that particular scent, I gave as a sophistication, I gave it a very good score of 4.7. It's very, very sophisticated for a man or a woman to wear. This is not a masculine, very masculine scent. It is more of a unisex leaning vetiver for the soft accords of the way he made the vetiver and oak moss. It is classic masculine, but women can wear this particular scent. So the sophistication level, meaning that you can wear this in leisure and casual settings. So it wasn't that, it's not that great of a sophisticated scent, but it is sophisticated in some realms. So I gave that a, um, a 4.7. The next I gave, the time is a spring and summer scent. So it really makes it a narrow scent to wear of about 3.6 on the uh, point score. The occasion, Daily leisure, sometimes you can wear it to a professional setting, but most daily leisure for me. So I gave this a, a mid score of 2.7. And the masculinity scale, like I said, this is a unisex leaning scent to me where you can wear this particularly and not be afraid uh, to share this with your lady if you like. It's not something she's gonna really reach for, but for she, she can because of that lemon and creamy feel to it. So I gave that a 3.5. I gotta give some knocks somewhere. You can't give all 5.5. Next, for Vetiver Sultan, now, Vetiver Sultan is a much more robust leaning vetiver fragrance. So the way I scored that one, I'm going to run through this as quickly as possible. The head, I gave a 3.7. The heart, I gave a 4. The base, I gave a 4.2. It's a really, really great scent built on all of the, all, I think every single vetiver that you can have in a fragrance is actually in this. The Java, the Haitian, um, some... Um, Mumbai vetiver, it's a lot of vetiver in this that makes it a great, great scent. The next thing up, I gave a sillage. This is a very strong fragrance of 4.7 in the sillage. The wake and trail behind this goes a mile long. The projection is a 4.9 out of five. Very, very strong, like I stated. The longevity is a 4.9 or 4.4, making this one of the stronger vetiver fragrances that is still light wearing in some ways, but as powerful as you want a vetiver fragrance to be without being overbearing. The actual Sophistication level on this 5.0 for this particular vetiver. It's a very masculine, well sophisticated, well suited towards sophisticated situation type of scent. The time is all seasons for me. This one here in particular can go from the winter colds all the way to the spring and summer. I wouldn't wear summer days, but summer evenings I would wear this particular scent. The occasion for this, like I said, all. This particular veteran fragrance can pull off as a Swiss Army knife type of fragrance. It's robust enough to wear anything in the wintertime and robust enough and cool enough, I should say, to wear anything in the spring, summer. Masculinity, this gets a 4.2 on the masculinity scale. Very high rating in masculinity because of the way that the base has a little bit of a leather tone to it. Some slight, some slight freshness, but mostly it's a very woody, rooty, woody, rooty, woody type of scent that comes off very well gives you such sophisticated oil about yourself. So those are the two vetiver fragrances, vetiver extract and Sultan vetiver. And so guys, so next up in this list, what I'm gonna do is come up with the two sensually seductive fragrances. One being, of course, Enigma slash Creation E from Roja 
and the other being Annie. Two very just decadent, boozy, succulently sweet, winter style of fragrances that I think any man, if they get it in their actual library, they're going to have a great time wearing these particular scents. So let's get the point system out for this one real quick. The composition for the Roja Creation E, the head, I gave a 3.5. The head on this is a very simple um, opening accord of bergamot, nothing real fancy. It has a, a sprightly bergamot to it, but nothing that jumps out at you really, really quickly. The heart is where it starts to shine and it starts to pick up. The heart of this one gets a 4.7 rating. The heart starts to come in with grass, uh, jasmine from grass. It has heliotrope, it has geranium, it has a nice May rose and neroli, which starts to turn into a really creamy, just succulent, creamy, boozy style of fragrance starting to go into that mid and it starts to get wonderful. The actual base of this is the Shining Star of it and that is a five. The base is the vanilla, cognac, and rum tobacco essence that has ambergris in it, a nice pepper accord. This is when the Rosa really gets to be a hard hitting fragrance. Very, very wonderful to wear, especially the basic chords, and they come up at around the two hour mark and you are smelling fantastic at that point. So on that, the CIs, you got a 4.1. The CIs on this one, especially the Eau de Parfum, can become quite, it's a trail that you can smell, but not something overwhelming. Like if you walk past someone in the two foot radius, they will catch a whiff of you and your CIs behind that. The projection, like I said, two foot radius, it comes down to a 3.7 versus the 4.1 in Siage. And the longevity on this fragrance, it does last quite a long time, even for the Eau de Parfum, and that's a 4.2. The actual impression and sophistication mode I gave, this one is a 5.0, very sophisticated cognac and tobacco scent. The time and occasion is fall, winter for this exclusively for me, and that gives it a rating of 4.2 because even though it's only in those seasons, it is very much so suited for those seasons. So 4.2 is a very good score for that one. The occasion, I kind of had to bring back the occasional wear for that to bring it to a 5.0. No, I didn't. I gave that a good score. The occasion on this one is uh, nights out and dinner dates and even evenings what I gave this. So I gave this a good score of 5.0 because in those, yes, it does. Knock it out. That is a 5.0 for that one. Masculinity, of course, is high for this one. That's a 4.5 score. So a total of this score for the Rosa Parfums 2 is 84.5 out of 100. So keep that score in mind. But next, we're going to go to Annie. And Annie, the head on Annie is a 3.3. Annie doesn't open up anything just super fantastic, just as the um, Creation E does it. Not for me, at least. It does start to settle in at the mid mark. It gets a 4.2 because once that mid of vanilla and Boozy Essence starts to come to the fore. It really starts to play in your nostrils and gives you a sense of confidence. And the people that smell you around are really, really starting to fucking turn their heads to see what you're smelling like and see who you are. The base of this is, like I said, where it starts to really shine and give it a nice scent trail and essence, which is a 4.9, a very great scent for anyone looking to get a, a masculine, sophisticated, four, or vanilla style of fragrance. That is the composition for any. The performance, this is a great performer as well. This is a 4.2 on the performance scale of Siage. Has a great trail and weight behind it. The projection also is a great score of 4.2 because it does project well. You can have this scent on and it will go at least four feet for the first two hours. And then after that, it's subdued, but it will be at least one, one and a half feet. So if you spread on your arms, that gives you some great longevity on your arms and a radius around you makes it bigger. The longevity on this one is, of course, it's an extra parfum. So we have 4.6 because it lasts a very long time on the skin and extra long on the clothing. Next up, the impression of the scent Annie. I gave the sophistication scale 2.9, especially for my taste because it has a very much, very, very, very elevated vanilla essence. And so sophistication and vanilla to me goes okay. They don't go hand in hand with sophistication. It does go hand in hand with like sexy and sensual, but not hand in hand with sophistication. The next up, the time to wear this is all seasons. I think you could pull off. Well, eh, I said all seasons, but I think I'm going to narrow this down to fall and winter. I'm still going to keep it at a 4.2 because in fall and winter, when you put this on for the occasion you want to wear it in, it is a great scent to wear in the fall and winter. The occasions is nights, weekends, dates, evenings, a great scent for those particular arenas. And in that, it does shine. And I gave it a 5.0. The total score for Annie and 
Souls and Vetiver came out to be an 84.5 as well. So, all in all, what I came up with in scoring these particular scents was that they came out to each be an 84 and a half out of 100 for these two scent houses. Now, anyone looking to purchase these particular scents, I'm going to show you my list. I was writing, scratching, writing, showing what it was that I wanted to put out, and they both came to an 84.5. So, I'm going to be right back. Of course, we can't have a tie. I came to realize that I have two more fragrances from the house of Nishanae and Roja Dove that can compete head to head in a three on three matchup for you guys. Like I said, this fun little list to bring out on Thanksgiving. And today, I'm going to end this list on my own personal take off the top of my head between Hasivat and Elysium. So, for me, the tiebreaker when smelling these two fragrances let's see what we get <laughs> Hasivat great great scent lemon pineapple woody effervescent very thick fragrance let's see what you guys think about this and what we got for Elysium Elysium more of a shining star Heavier, more sparkling, more woody, less oak moss. Let's see. We have Elysium on the left hand. Let's put Hasibot on the right hand. We're going to get this out the way. Ah oh, man, it's... I have to say, <laughs> man, that's kind of tough. That's a tough one. I'm going to give the the nod to the Rosia. A bit more sparkling, a bit more complex smelling, a brighter fragrance, more natural. I'm going to give it to the Rosia de Abelisi. I'm going to give it to the Rosa Dove Elysium, guys. So all in all, today we have the competition is over as far as it goes right now. I hope this was fun for you guys. Um, yeah, I hope it was fun for you guys. Just a, qu a quick competition. Today we looked at the head-to-head -head of Sultan Vetiver versus Vetiver Extrait. We looked at Annie versus Creation E. And we looked at Elysium versus Hasivad. All great fragrances, all items that I think anyone should get their nose on. Like I said, a friendly competition. If one of these fragrances is your favorite, it's one of mine too. All in all, great competition. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Happy Thanksgiving to all you guys. I hope this was fun for you. Just a quick video to show up and guys, show you guys a real shout out on Thanksgiving Day. Enjoy the day. Blessings. Peace.